the Latina community has such a large umbrella. I struggled with like identity for a bit. I feel super fortunate to be multicultural. I love being a citizen of the world. I know, I know, you know, it's calling my name, just... <laughs> I live in Mexico, so I eat them. Wait, you live in Mexico? Mm -hmm. Get out. I know. Well, Ramon, are you from Mexico? I was born here in the United States, but both my parents are from Mexico. What about you? Um, I was born and raised in San Bernardino, California. My mom is from uh, Mexico and my dad's from Vietnam. Wow, interesting. The Latina community has such a large umbrella because we are so different and have different upbringings and experiences. Everyone's unique. Right, Everyone right, has their right, own right. reality. So many nuances. Yeah. I think that's why representation is so important. Every single one of us mm -hmm. comes from such a specific background. Right, mm -hmm. right, and comes, right. And, but it's the same as put under this Latinx culture, which is amazing. Like, it's beautiful. We'll make videos based on like our experience of growing up as a Mexican-American in Southern California. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get comments from people that grew up Mexican-American, but like in Texas, and they're like, whoa, 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 that's not how it right. goes. Like, that's exactly. not right. And we're like, well, it's right to us. Exactly, so there's, no, there's not one right yeah. way. No, yeah, exactly. Not. I'm second generation Puerto Rican. I grew up in New York. Some people are like, well, but you're not Puerto Rican. You're New York Rican. Mm. And I'm like, well, I'm still Puerto Rican yeah, from New York. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's <laughs> like, right, it's like, no, you're not, not any, any less yeah, no. or any more just because no. I'm not from the island. And language too, like I didn't grow up speaking Spanish. You know, some friends were like, well, you're not really Puerto Rican because you don't speak the language. You understand it all. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, definitely. Right, right. Oh, you're not American enough because you're Mexican. Mm. But there's always mm -hmm. like a battle. Do you feel an obligation to teach people about Hispanic culture through the characters you play? There's definitely the responsibility yeah. to represent mm -hmm. and show a little bit of our culture. Being an Afro-Latina, mm -hmm. how do you want to see Afro-Latinas represented in TV and film? With all of the nuances included in every single story, with Afro-Latinos, we have these stories of resistance that are really localized. I think the more that we have these experiences coming to the forefront, mm -hmm. as whether it's like first generation or mm -hmm. it's something more historical, I would love to see just, just more. Yeah, yeah. More. To simply exist. Did you grow up seeing female Latina directors? Not as much. I saw more African-American representation mm -hmm. and it was so incredible to be able to learn from that and see uh, and be like, okay, yeah, like I'm definitely reflected in that. But there's also this other part that is nuanced of me that isn't being reflected, especially as an Afro-Latina. And I was like, all right, so like, that means that it's my job to do it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, like awesome. let's yeah. get, let's let's get this done. Your YouTube videos, there's humor, but it's, it's also highly nuanced. Mexican survival guide, I guess it was pretty much a product of our lives combined. Like, yes, I grew up Mexican, but like Ramon grew up a lot more Mexican than me. Like he grew up with a lot more experiences. He's like teaching that character, Chris, about Mexican culture. And at the same time, he's like teaching me like in real life. Well, I think as a community, as Latinos, we gotta support each other and just uplift each other. And then also, I don't know like most of the Mexican traditions and like culture. So in the process of trying to teach people the beauty of Mexican culture, I'm also learning about it too. I pretty much have dealt with three different cultures my whole life. I have the American culture, the Mexican culture, and the Vietnamese culture. Because of that, I've always felt out of place for the most part. This is just who I am. Like, I can't really change who I am and definitely have accepted it now. My mother's from Venezuela. My father's from Dominican Republic. So I'm not Venezuelan enough. I'm not mm. Dominican enough. But I'm enough. Right, yeah, yeah. 100%. You know, yeah. so, and I think, but it makes for a more rich understanding of existing. I love the fact that I'm biracial now. I could have Manulo one day, and then the next day I could have pho. It's like, it's great. <laughs> it's the best I of both worlds. Like, who wouldn't love that? <laughs> it's so interesting that having all of these profound perspectives, being Vietnamese, American, Mexican, being Puerto Rican, born and raised in New York, being Mexican, born and raised in, in California, like, it doesn't make sense to me how that could possibly be a downside in any way. Mm. Yeah. Because you're yeah. able to recognize more cultures 
because of that. That's the beauty in the Hispanic world, that we're all so different, but we share so many similar experiences. It's magical because we get that well. I just have to say, you three took control of, you know, this this crazy industry and we're like, I'm gonna create it. I'm gonna be the one to produce it and write it and, and, and star in it. I commend you three and I feel very proud to see that happening.